Sorry. Okay. Is um, hopefully hopefully everybody is okay with that. We didn't ask beforehand, but um, um, if you're not, then then uh, oh, you're okay. So Sarge is giving me the thumbs up. Right. Um, be here. Um, the sign they have is only partnership can bring change, and that was very much the theme of the rally. And you can see here some quotes of of students who who spoke at the rally, calling for you know people to to calm down and to and to work out that they have to share Jerusalem and to stop racism and incitement and all of those sorts of things. Um, and Senyo also called for calm on all sides, but he didn't specifically mention the explicit Lehava march or, or any of those things that were that were inciting a lot of the violence. Um, and then the next thing that happened was in, in Shesharas. So Shesharas, a neighbourhood in, in East Jerusalem, I'm sure Hiba will speak a lot more about it in a moment, where um, there's a tomb there that's believed to be of, of a man who lived 2,000 years ago called Shimon Atzadik. Um, and he was he was one of the priests of the, of the temple, according to Jewish belief. Um, and so... Um, in this is a this is an image of of that tomb um, in, in Sterot, who who is Israeli. He was um, and he was in his safe room at the time uh, when a rocket hit his house, um, and the rocket actually pierced the the safe room, and that's how he he lost his life. So that was that was a great tragedy for Sterot, a city that's actually suffered many many rocket attacks um, over over the years. Um, and there, there, are, there are many stories of Palestinian children, but at least the one that spoke to me and I think the one that sort of reached many people around the world was, was on the first Saturday morning of the war when a rocket hit the Abu Hattab family um, in the, in the Al-Shatir refugee camp. And there's, there's a 10-year-old girl who was the neighbour of, of the house that was hit and she, she's looking at all these bodies and, and she says it's not fair. Like, what did they do? What how could you possibly, you know, justify this? And and Israel said that this was the house of of a terrorist, even though there was no terrorist in the house. And um, I don't know if it was a mistake. I don't know why that house was targeted. The IDF hasn't really explained why it hit that house. But you can see, um, you know, the pain in in the eyes of this girl asking, you know, why why should such a thing um, happen to me? And no no one has an answer for her. Um, afterwards, uh, Mansour Abbas, who's the leader of the Ram political party, after the war ended, he came to um, came to Lod and he actually said, as, as a leader of an Islamic party, I want to help rebuild um, this synagogue. And, uh, and he stood next to the mayor of, of Lod as well, talking about the, the importance of, um, of, of, you know, not, not doing these sorts of things in the name of of Islam, and then um, on the second of June, which is you know just a couple of days ago, to really to everyone's surprise, Ram was uh, included in in a coalition within um, within Israel. This is a new coalition that will be sworn in the next few days. And it's quite a historic photo that you can see on the screen there because um, the Ram party has never been in a in a coalition before, and there have been while there have been Arab. Sort of smaller Arab parties um, in in Israeli coalitions before of of the nature of of Ram is is unheard of. Um, I don't necessarily think that will change much um, practically. And again, I'll get to that a bit later. But in terms of where we are now, Israel's possibly in a situation where, for the first time in twelve years, Netanyahu will no longer be prime minister and will be replaced by a coalition that includes these three men. So I'll stop there. And oh, shucks, it was on. Pass over to, uh, to Hiba. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Itai. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, uh, Hiba, uh, once again, welcome. And um, we look forward uh, to hearing um, your presentation now. Could I ask everybody to ensure that they're muted, please? Thank you. Okay, uh, it's hard to know from where to start, but uh, I will uh, talk about myself. My name is Hiba. Uh, Hiba means uh, a present in Arabic. I am uh, 28 uh, years old and I live in Beit Hanina in East Jerusalem. Uh, I was born in uh, Jerusalem. I lived all my life here and I know 
no place else. I just know this place that, that I was raised in, I was born in. Um, I um, I grew uh, I grew up I was raised up in the first uh, in the second intifada, uh, and um, um, I remember that uh, we didn't use to uh, visit relatives. We didn't use to go like um, like go out from the house. I uh, my whole life was like to go to the school and uh, come back to uh, to home. That. That's what's uh, uh, what I did as a child. I uh, used to uh, see a lot of news all the time um, about uh, the um, the occupation invading uh, the Israeli occupation invading Ramallah or uh, shooting uh, Gaza or um, a lot of things here or also in Jerusalem. And uh, if you ask me about uh, my childhood, I will uh, um, I will uh, remember that um, um, I remember this uh, photo of uh, Muhammad al Durra. Uh, it's a very famous photo uh, of a of a child that was uh, shot by an Israeli soldier in Gaza in the second Intifada. He was uh, with his father in the market. And they uh, went to hide from the shooting. Uh, they hide it on uh, like behind a tank of like iron or something. And uh, the child was shot uh, to death, and the father uh, saw his like saw his uh, child uh, dying. Um, I was in the same uh, age of Muhammad when I saw his photo. Uh, when I saw the film. Uh, um, Yes, this is the photo. Um, I was in the same age of Muhammad, the child, uh, when I saw this at, uh, in news. A, um, a, um, uh, a, um, a journalist was there and uh, yani had the opportunity to film that. And uh, as a as a game, I was uh, I was always hiding uh, behind our sofa. Um, and imagining if I was in uh, the same situation of Muhammad, what would uh, what how would I behave? Uh, how would I hide uh, in a good way that uh, they won't shoot me? So th this was like this was uh, my ideas. Th these are uh, games that I used to to play, um, and the things that I used to think about. Um, now I. Um, uh, I am a spoken Arabic teacher. Uh, I teach uh, mainly Israelis uh, spoken Arabic uh, because I think uh, it is so important that they know Arabic. Um, as, an, as an Arab, uh, I feel obliged to know Hebrew because this, uh, this is the superior language. This is my occupier language. It is the strong language in the atmosphere, and this it is the strong uh, language in like workspace and markets and everywhere in university. So uh, I must know it. Uh, I am obliged to know it. But as an Israeli, an Israeli, you know, uh, don't have to know Arabic because he's the superior, and uh, uh, like uh, Arabs must uh, must uh, learn uh, Hebrew. So. Like and as uh, Israelis don't have to, actually. But uh, I think that um, um, in order to understand and to hear and to, to see the truth, um, you know, everyone must know the other's language. Uh, my work isn't easy. It's hard. Um, but uh, I don't teach the language without. Um, without saying my opinions, without uh, uh, letting uh, the students see, see how do I live in my daily life, what I think, uh, in what I believe. This is so important. If you, if you want to learn Arabic, you must also uh, you know, get to know my, my culture, my life, my suffering, my, my thoughts, how I live. Uh, and when I when I opened the link and saw the the name of the webinar, uh, 
how to prevent the next war, uh, I have only one answer to end the occupation. I don't have any other answer. Uh, we, we are talking about things that happened. Um, sometimes we, we forgot and like we, you know, we say Arab, Arab Palestinian did that, uh, Israelis did that, blah, blah, blah. But like, we sometimes forgot, forget that this is an occupation. This is, this is the reason for everything um, from the beginning. Joy, can you mute yourself, please? Uh, so uh, this is the, um, uh, the cause of everything at the beginning. I can't, I can't think of any other solution. Uh, when the when the Israeli when, when the Israeli army blocked uh, uh, Mas the Damascus Gate in, in the beginning of Ramadan, there was no other reason than than uh, inciting than uh, you know inciting than uh, than like uh, they wanted violence to happen. They know this is a holy month, Ramadan, and the, the Damascus Gate is the the main uh, the main gate of Jerusalem, the main gate and the main road for prayers to go to Al Aqsa Mosque and to pray. Um, in in Ramadan nights, this Damascus Gate is like full of people, not only prayers who go to pray, also also non-religious Muslims that that they come to see the lights to eat. To, to come with friends, to sit on the stairs. But, uh, you know, occupation, uh, the Israeli occupation wants to say, we rule here, okay, we rule here. If you want to block the stairs, we will block it. And you can do nothing about it. Um, um, they said uh, at first that uh, like the excuse was, uh, that they wanted to organize like the coming and going out of the gate, yani the, the entering and going out. Um, like it's a big place, it's a very big amphitheater. Uh, there is no need to organize anything. Um, and if something must be organized, the Palestinians themselves, they will organize that by themselves. We don't, know, we don't need the, 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 the municipality of Jerusalem or the municipality of the occupation to, to, to organize for us anything. Uh, it's, it's just a way to say we are here and we, we, we control things. You know, we control your prayer, we control your entering, we control your uh, going out of Jerusalem, we control everything. So the youth didn't like it. Um, um, it's uh, another, uh, another kind of oppression. It's another uh, image of oppression. Um, uh, and there was no reason for it. Um, also, the Damascus Gate, the amphitheater of Damascus Gate, is the like the only place I can see uh, say in Jerusalem that you know all the Jerusalemites can come and sit, like no no matter what they think and how religious they are, um, they feel together there. They feel that they are the same. They feel strong there. They they feel belo belong belong. Like, they, they feel that they belong to that place. And also the occupation doesn't like this idea. Uh, the occupation aims always to, to divide us, to make us apart, to make us uh, uh, weak, uh, to make us um, like um, not to get, like not uh, united. Um, and um, yeah, so, so all of uh, this story uh, like started again, I will say started again because I'm not with the idea that, like, um, you know, unfortunately, uh, uh, also me, you know, also Palestinian, all, also Jerusalemite themselves, like they, they, uh, in order to survive, we, we, we need to forget a little bit, in order to survive and continue in our life. So uh, we don't forget that we, 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 we live under occupation, but like. Uh, in normal days, things are more normal, but no, things are never normal. Occupation is always doing its job. Occupation is always working. 
it's not because we see uh, you know uh, children killed in gaza and the uh, people in sheikh jarrah and in silwan are are being are being deported and like it's not uh, you know it's not when we see things like that violence like that uh, on media that we uh, we say ah oh, it started again it never stops occupation always it's it's always working it's always doing what like whatever it aims to do uh, illegal settlements are always all, always um, built and they are always uh, you know they continue to build it every day uh, for me i i i live with my family and i have 10 nephews and nieces and uh, we want to build uh, you know another uh, another uh, uh, floor uh, so that uh, my nieces and my nephews, uh, you know, can can have each one can have his own room, or girls can have their own room, and boys can have like uh, boys and you know at, at least in one flat two rooms for children. And we have the money. We are not begging for uh, for money from the Israeli municipality or anything, but because we are Arabs and uh, we own the land, you know, we own the land that we we built on. But in order to uh, to build another floor, we have to wait a lot of years. We have to uh, ask for a construction permit. Everyone must uh, ask for a construction permit. It's not new. But uh, if an Israeli want uh, um, uh, the same construction permit, he will wait two years, three years maximum. We were waiting. We have been waiting 12 years to, to, to build a, an, an extra floor because we want to live we don't want to fight we don't want to kill somebody we want we don't want to make a war we want to live we want um, we want our nieces my nieces and my nephews to have their own rooms okay so you know what about what we are talking yani what we are we, what we are expecting from education and i'm not i'm not saying that all israelis and all jews are occupiers i i know i i, I work with the, with israelis and i work with jews i teach them arabic and i know uh, a lot of my students are against occupation um, um but at the end of the day at the end of the day these students okay they are against occupations occupation they go into a demonstration they um, uh, you know they uh, they educate their children not to go to the army maybe or uh, or uh, to to be also against the occupation but at the end of the day i am the inferior one like i am i can be shot in the street i can be arrested in a demonstration if a if a left israeli went to a demonstration ah maybe he will be arrested for a few hours and, and then freed you know um, at the end he's he's israeli you know at the end i am the inferior one i i am under uh, under uh, attack i am uh, i can be deported from my house um that, and that's what's happening in Sheikh Jarrah and Silwan. Sheikh Jarrah and Silwan are two neighborhoods uh, um, near, uh, they are um, uh, near Al-Aqsa Mosque. And, uh, you know, the plan is to, to make um, a, ge a geographical, you know, uh, connection between uh, settlements, Israeli settlements. You know, uh, they want to, to, surround Al-Aqsa or surround Jerusalem with settlements, um, um, give Jerusalem a Jewish identity. Um, uh, already is Israel like identify itself as a, 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 a you know, Jewish state. You know, yani already it is discrim it is racist. Already it is, uh, you know, it's out of question. It is racist, but uh, uh, in, in the case of Jerusalem, they want to, to make a, ge a geographical connection. They want to deport the Palestinians from these two uh, neighborhoods because they are near Al-Aqsa. And they, you know, they, they um, you know, uh, Palestinian uh, living in them, uh, they, they kind of, you know, um, uh, 
uh, how to say that uh, they uh, they bother this connection they they um, it's a problem for the geographical uh, continuation of the settlement so uh, what's happening is that um, they try to uh, to buy the property the, the houses from their own uh, owners, which, which are Palestinians. Um, either they try to buy it, and the Palestinian, uh, of course, refuse to sell it. Uh, yani they they uh, they offer a lot of of money, a lot of money. You know, a lot of money. Yani, uh, for these. Families uh, living in such uh, conditions, uh, in bad conditions, in uh, they can't build, they can't, uh, you know, they can't. It's dangerous uh, uh, to go out from their houses. You know, in these conditions, it's very easy to to sell and go, go away, go to London, go to America, go to Australia, go to Norway. Look, like, okay, sell it and go. Yeah, I, you know. Forget about the conflict. I want my my kids to live. But no, these Palestinians don't uh, think like that. They have uh, the, it's against their principles. It's against it's my land. I have the right to build here. I settle uh, this settlers who is coming from the end of the world has the right to 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 return to return to Israel. You know, some settlers have never been uh, been in Israel, and all their family have has have never been in Israel, but they have to return to Israel because it is the, the land that is promised to them by God. Uh, they have to come, they, they have the right to come whenever they want. They have the right to build, to, to, to work, to have the nationality, to have all the rights. And I, a Palestinian, uh, all my family lived here and, and were, was born here. I don't have the right to 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 build another floor. It's not just that. Any any time I am I am uh, you know um, I am uh, threatened to be deported because some some Jewish guys some settlers some uh, can come with a with a document saying that this land I I am living uh, on was before 100 years was uh, was for uh, for uh, Jews. And they can't deport me because, you know, again, Palestinian, these Palestinian uh, families who live in Sheikh Jarrah and Silwan, who are uh, threatened to be deported, they go to the Israeli courts, uh, although they, they don't believe in Israeli courts. You know, how can we believe in the occupation law, on the occupation, you know, uh, justice? How can we believe in it? But... At the same time, they they say we we will go. We want we want you know uh, surrender. We will go. We will do everything. And at the end, these uh, these courts uh, they say that uh, they they give the settlers the land because every Jewish uh, can can return to Israel and if he has a document that says that the land belongs to him, he can take the land and the house and everything on this land. But all the Palestinians deported and, uh, you know, uh, kicked off their land. They can never come. They can never even visit sometimes. They can't uh, take a visa. Refugees, they can't, uh, they can't give refugees a visa to come to Israel to, to visit their, their, uh, like their old house. Um, um, this, this is occupation. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, racism. Um, you know, I I used to go to demonstration once uh, when I was a student in university. I used to, I used to go. Uh, I I still believe in these things. Uh, these things are very important. Uh, I must say what I think. I must, uh, um, you know, defend what I defend what I have. I must defend my my my. Uh, um, my um, you know people uh, but I'm, I'm telling you you know if I go to demonstration I only risk myself you know I, I put myself in danger I can be shot I can be arrested uh, and if I am arrested it's not like just I am arrested and they will you know free me in a few a few days it's it's a, it's a tick in my in my document you know 
it's uh, every every time I go through checkpoint, they will make me problem. Every time I will, I can, uh, I I would go uh, out of the country. They make me problem if they will let me go out of the country. Um. So, um. It it worked. It worked a little bit. You know, people saw us on med media. They um uh, they had. The, like they supported us, but uh, what I'm saying is, I am afraid that this wave will 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 fade again, as uh, as every wave ha ha like uh, has faded before. Gaza went through four wars recently, and uh, each war we we used to sit, you know, um, in front of the TV and see the children die and like inside of us dying. Can't do anything. We can't do nothing. And uh, okay, people around the world are supporting us, are sending their love, are but it's 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 happening again and again and again. Like um, um, occupation and settlers, they they think that you know God is with them. <laughs> settlers think that God is with them. So. If you if you saw the the video of, of a settler in Sheikh Jarrah uh, 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 stealing the fruits of uh, one tree of uh, a Palestinian uh, house, and when the when the woman is asking him uh, why are you stealing our fruit, and he says if I didn't steal it, someone else will steal it. This is the logic of settle, of settlers. Unfortunately, this is the logic of settlers, and settlers these settlers are ruling Israel. Okay, unfortunately, there are good people. There are good Israelis, for sure. It, it's, there is no doubt. But who rules? These people rule. You know, hatred rule, violence rules. Uh, so for me, you know, I am so, I'm so, let's talk personally. Let's not talk about politi politics. You know, I'm afraid to, to fall in love and to, 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 to be married and to have children here. I'm afraid. First of all, where would I live? Where would I live? If I if I left Jerusalem, if I went abroad, uh, they would take my identity card because I am not a citizen. I am a, a resident. Uh, I'm not Israeli. I'm Palestinian. But I am. I I I, I, I was born in, in Jerusalem. This is my this is my homeland. This is the only place I know in the world. But uh, because of uh, the racist law of occupation. Uh, if I go uh, abroad for one year and I don't come back, they have the right to take to take uh, out take uh, for me my identity card. I can't come back to my home, to my family, to my everything, to my memories. I can't even visit. Uh, but an Israeli from a, a Jewish a Jew, a Jew from uh, all around the world, he can visit whenever he wants. Uh, although maybe he have n no memories at all here, um, you know I'm I'm uh, I'm I'm I don't have hope because uh, you know um, I work with Israelis and I I I I talk and I participate in dialogues and I participate in panels and I am I am a, you know a, 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 like a, I'm a strong activist in 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 in, in feminism, in in dialogue, and in education. I I, I believe in education. Uh, if we if everyone educate his children and uh, like uh, forbid forbid them to go to the army, forbid them to 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 do violence, this won't happen. But no, I arrived to a point that uh, most you know most of most of the people I, I uh, most of the uh, people who votes and uh, you know under this uh, in, in this country the Israelis are are racist they hate Arabs they they want us they they, they don't believe in in uh, you know in uh, in a shared life in a shared uh, homeland and um, you know I Maybe you can ask questions. Maybe it's easier for me to talk when. Hiba, <laughs> Hiba, thank you so much. Um, and um, 
I, I'm sure that I'll speak for many on, on, on the call when I say that you have made your case. I, 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 I think that um, um, we definitely get a, a very good sense of, and, and even things that you haven't said, because obviously I know there's a lot of a lot of things that you could have said in the time, but we get the sense and I think we get the important message. And I know that there will be questions and the, there are questions. Um, so um, I'm going to go for I'm going to go to um, Itai and I know he's going to speak a bit about Kids for Peace um, very briefly. So um, Sadia, perhaps you could um, spotlight uh, Itai for us. And um, then, um, uh, and I'm, I'll, I'll ask you a couple of questions, which are directly for you after you've you've spoken a little bit about uh, about some of the things that you're doing, because obviously the although we've we've heard from from Hiba that ending the occupation is the way to prevent another war, um, you're still working on the ground, and so is Hiba, um, you're, but you're working on the ground in the meantime. So um, what what uh, can you tell us, please? Yeah. Thank you. Um, I just want to say firstly, just to Hiba, um, just especially what you said about Muhammad al-Dora, I, I kept thinking about my own children. I, I haven't, I know I look young, but I actually have two children, um, a, a nine-year-old and a 12-year-old. And, and I live in West Jerusalem. I live probably 15 minutes from you. Um, and the way my children are raised is so different from the way that you described your childhood. Um, and I think, I don't think many Jewish Israelis know how different it is to, to, to grow up in, in West and East Jerusalem, but as I mentioned, are only 15 minutes apart from each other. And, you know, it's heartbreaking to think that you feel like you can't live, you know, if you grow up, if you marry, you know, that there's no place for you in Jerusalem, because I think Jerusalem very much needs people like you here um, to, to fight for this city. And I, and I hope that things can change in the future so that there is that you do feel like there's a place from you here and that people can either either get citizenship or, or, or statehood. Um, um, but thank you for sharing what you did from the heart. I know that's not an easy story to share. Um, I'll just say a little bit about what I do um, in, in Jerusalem. So I work in an organization uh, called Kids for Peace Jerusalem where we bring together Israeli and Palestinian teenagers from East and West Jerusalem. We meet once a week, um, usually. There's been a lot of changes this year because of COVID, but um, the aim of the meetings is to, is to celebrate the festivals of all the religions together. Um, we have summer camps uh, in 2019. We also took the, a group of 12 students to Belfast as well to look at the divide there between the Catholics and Protestants and Republicans and nationalists and see see the wall in Belfast, see how that's divided people, but also see how since the Good Friday Accords, um, people there are working to somehow, um, not that there's necessarily peace in, in Northern Ireland, but but definitely it's a lot more peaceful than, than during the Troubles. And, and we went there to, to sort of learn is there something that we can learn from other other conflicts, other occupations, and look at how they ended and see if there's a message there? Um, for us, we also take the kids to, to Washington. We have town hall events with religious leaders who interpret the Quran, interpret the Torah in ways that call for peace. I know there was a question here about the Ten Commandments. Uh, Ten Commandments are something that you know exist in Judaism, in Islam. Love your neighbor of yourself is something that exists in. All, all of the religions, um, and it's and it's a matter of actually implementing those things. I think the problem isn't the religion; the problem is the interpretation of religion. When you take your religion to, to as the settlers do sometimes, to to justify, you know, um, theft and and hatred, or you can use your religion to uh, to live in a way that's peaceful and that's respecting of all the people who were created by God, who share Jerusalem together, and that's very much my approach. Um, so within um, Kids for Peace, these are some of our youth. Our office is actually located in Sheikh Jarrah, and so I'm very familiar with, with the neighbourhood. And, um, you know, throughout the, the month of, of Ramadan, we, we gathered the, the children there and we had iftar meals and we talked about what was going on and we talked about TikTok and violence and, 
Uh, we talked about the need for, for equality and the conversations. I know that everyone's smiling in this picture, but conversations are not easy and, and a lot of difficult questions um, come up. But we believe that by giving the kids an opportunity to meet each other and to talk to one another, especially given the fact that all of them go to different schools, they all go to schools with just mm -hmm. Jewish, Israeli or, or Palestinian Christian or Muslims, like they're not in, none of the kids, except for a handful at Hand in Hand, actually go to... Mm -hmm. The mixed schools and so kids for peace is one of the few places where they get to meet and talk to one another and this is something i really believe can um while not in the near future hopefully in the long term um uh give people um hope that, that perhaps a different reality is is different so um at this point i'm happy to take questions about our work or or answer questions from the chat whatever you prefer, Jane. Thank you. Yes, I, I, um, we've got uh, some questions everyone can see and some that are um, um, coming to us individually. So I'll try and, and group together um, what, what I think will work. And, um, and we've had one question, which I think is rhetorical, but maybe we'll come back to it later, um, is why do the children suffer? Why is it always the children that suffer, you know, in these things? So. Um, that's maybe something we can have at the back of our, our minds, and certainly your work, uh, Itai, does address that. Um, so uh, I've got a couple of questions about the, the new coalition, um, fragile and uh, though it is, and maybe it won't last, but um, uh, just as you mentioned at the beginning, um, very clearly, I know some people will have, have missed that, um, we have, there is um, a, a coalition of, of parties united only by the, the fact that they're not Benjamin Netanyahu um, and um, quite what will happen with that and how they will work together and if they can work together, we don't know. Um, but the question is, for you really, um, do you think anything, does it have any chance of success? Can anything come out of this? Um, what do you think? Um, I'll, I'll say this, this coalition is not going to end the occupation and it's not going to do any of the things that, um, that I think Hibber, Hibber called for um, in, in what she shared. I think what this coalition will do is remove Netanyahu from office. Um, and at least for me as a Jewish Israeli that I did not support Netanyahu at all, um, I think that's still a very important thing because removing him from office removes a person that's really um, not only caused hatreds between Jews and Arabs, but also a lot of hatred between Jews and Jews um, in Israel. I won't go through everything he's done in the past 12 years, but um, I've, I've seen him as a very divisive leader. And also since the, the beginning of his trial, um, he's, he's almost been obsessed with staying in power and has done all sorts of deals that, that are really ridiculous in terms of the, the people he forgives and the people he enables in order to stay in power during his trial. And I, don't, I think once a person is on trial for corruption, they should resign from their office and defend the, themselves um, as, a, as an ordinary citizen. And if he's found innocent, then he could, uh, he could resume being prime minister if he won election again. But I, I really think it's a terrible idea to have people on trial serving um, in office. We had four elections about this. In none of those four elections did Netanyahu get a majority um, of, of the votes um, of parties to, to support him. And so I think it's a good thing that he's going. I think internally, I think this coalition can do good things um, for, for Jewish Israelis, perhaps for some Arab Israelis in the Negev, if Ram actually get the promises that they've been promised in terms of recognizing the unrecognized villages, um, canceling the Kamenitz law, um, and, and an investment to stop the gun violence in the Arab communities. If this is something this coalition will actually do, then I think it could benefit um, the Arab-Palestinian citizens. But in terms of what does it change anything in East Jerusalem and Gaza and the West Bank, no. Okay, thank you. Um, and here's a question for both of you. Um, do you think that, um, is, is there any uh, chance that a, a, a one, uh, a, a one democratic state of the whole region could um, could work um, if that was if that was was possible. I mean, are there, there are obviously pros and cons to to this suggestion, but a lot of people now are talking less about a two state solution and more about a one state solution from from all perspectives. Um, how do you both feel about this? Um, Heber, 
and, and if I could ask you both to be quite brief, um, if you can be, that would be brilliant. But Heba, can I ask you, first of all, um, what you think about this? It's uh, it's a question that is being it's uh, always always asked. Um, first of all, I uh, as I said, uh, let's not see that as two states, okay? It, Palestine, uh, like Palestinian, they 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 are divided. They don't have a state for themselves, okay? What's what's being in Ramallah and uh, the the Palestinian authority? It's not. Uh, it doesn't represent all the Palestinian. The uh, Palestinian are a nation under occupation. We can't we can't treat them. We can't treat Palestine and Israel as as equal. Israel has all the support from America. Has uh, has all the uh, has an army. Has uh, guns. Has everything. Uh, and Palestinians, they are occupied and they are divided. They don't have a state. They don't uh, have their own army. So we can't we can't like see them as equal. Um, so um, a democratic one state. Um, can be can be uh, can be uh, possible if there are two states, you know, two states they are equal in their in their strength, uh, and not one superior and, and one inferior. Because of that, uh, every negotiation between the two sides always fails, because there are a superior part and there is an inferior part. Israelis always, you know, write the plan, and Palestinians have to accept it. Because look, like we don't have nothing to lose. We don't have nothing anyway. So like uh, the Israeli, they don't have like to to you know to um, um, to give us uh, things. You know they, they they have all what they they want. Like uh, what what would uh, would happen to cause them to uh, like to um, to give a solution that is good also for the Palestinians. We can't, and I, I, I'll say it again. Uh, I, I saw a lot of racism and discrimination from occupation. We can't trust occupation. We can't trust. We can't make peace with occupation. You know, uh, there are illegal settlements in the West Bank. They are going uh, bigger and bigger every day, as I talk. Uh, settlers, they can do whatever they want. With the army, with the army defending them, and we can't tell them anything. Because I, when I, when if I was, if I were in the street, they, I may be shot, and nobody uh, can be, uh, nobody would be uh, like uh, uh, sentenced or prison from these settlers. Why? Because they are defending themselves. You know, I live here. I know what's happening here. You know, it's it's uh, it's so it. Yani, please, I'm, I'm like, I'm talking to some people. Please, don't be naive. Don't be naive. Like, uh, if, 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 if the problem is paying, uh, paying grant, you know how, how the problem got big, that big, that we are talking about it now. You know, uh, why, why are some people just uh, defending Israel? They are not Israeli. They are not just, but they are just defending Israel with, with all their strength. With no reason, you know, I I don't understand. I don't believe in one state unless there is no occupation. If there is no occupation, we can do anything. As long as there is occupation, we can do nothing. You know, as 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 long as there is oppression, as long as there is killing, as long as uh, Israel is is like cleaning uh, their image uh, for people around the world. And they're saying that we are uh, we are rocketing Gaza and killing these children because we are defending our people. But Hamas is is uh, uh, you know is is, is rocketing us uh, because um, you know they don't care about their people. This is this is so funny, really. This is so funny. I'm not yeah. defending Hamas. I'm not defending anybody. But I'm I'm not defending the occupation. Occupation is occupation. Uh, killing is killing. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Um, 
Uh, so can I um, ask you, Itai, very briefly about your your view on this on this question? Yeah, maybe, maybe I'll just share a little bit about my family before I answer the question. So my, my mother, my grandmother, sorry, came to Palestine in, in 1933 um, from Germany. Um, she came here because um, she, she, she joined the kibbutz. Um, she came here just, just as Hitler came to power because she felt that she wasn't safe in Germany anymore. And she was one of the very few people in my family that survived because she left Germany to come to, come to Palestine. And my mother um, came here in the 1950s from, from Iraq. She was born in, in Baghdad. One in five people who lived in, in Baghdad in the 1940s um, were, were Jewish. There was a huge Jewish community there. Almost all of them came uh, to Israel in the 1950s. And, and I was born here in, in Ramat Gan. I grew up in Australia, which is why I have an Australian accent. But for me, if, if the state of Israel didn't exist, I don't know if I would necessarily be alive today because both of my grandparents were refugees and this was a place that allowed them to find safety and security. So I very much want um, Israel to exist. At the same time, I'm very much against the occupation. I'm very much against um, house demolitions and all the injustices that, that Hiba is talking about that happens in Jerusalem. And I know that those injustices are done by my government for my benefit in a certain way as well. And what I want to see here is I want to see a state of Israel and a state of Palestine that both have equality and especially within Jerusalem that everyone can live, travel, work and study from one side to the other side of the city, that they can build their homes, that they can travel from place to place, that they can have passports, very fundamental basic rights that doesn't happen now. Um, in terms of what's the best way to do that, so I support um, something that's called a, a confederation, which you can see on this screen. Um, if you go to alandforall.org, you'll see um, the website. It's called Two States, One Homeland. The idea of it is just simply put is that it creates um, one homeland between the river and the sea. And within that, there are two states with porous borders, meaning people can go back and forth. It's not a hard border like you, like you have in in, in other countries, a bit like the EU, I guess, where you can go from country to country without necessarily checking your passport every time you move from, from one country to another country. Um, and that would give self-determination both to Israelis and to Palestinians. But in order to get there, there's a lot of work that still needs to be done. Um, and we're, we're a long way away from that yet. Okay, thank you very much. And in fact, um, that that story um, that you shared leads us on to another question, um, which is that um, many people would um, out, outside Israel and, and non-Jews would would recognise the importance of Israel as a safe haven for Jews, as you say, somewhere somewhere where Jews can go to. I mean, history hasn't exactly given Jewish communities the confidence to um, trust that they're going to be safe wherever they are in the world. Um, and so how do you balance the, the, this concept of a safe haven and a right to return if, you know, as you say, if, you've, if you historically are under threat of deportation, or of, of, of annihilation, um, how, how can you balance this against Palestinian rights? Um, obviously, the right of return for Jews is, is one issue, and we understand from, from the events of the Shoah why, uh, but... Um, and, and the rights of, to return to Palestinians to come back to where they lived uh, pre-1948 is also uh, practically problematic. So how do we balance the rights of Palestinians against um, the, uh, the need for um, the preservation of the state of Israel, even as a safe haven, safe haven let alone the fact that it's a UN uh, country in its own right? So if, if you ask every Palestinian how to end the conflict, they'll all say end the occupation. That's pretty, it's a pretty standard answer you hear from everyone. If you ask every Israeli how to end it, they'll say stop the rockets and the terrorism and the violence. You know, that's, that's the answer that every Israeli will give because most Israelis, we don't see the occupation. We don't see, we don't hear stories of like what Kib is sharing. We just see on our, you know, I watched, I watched the news for 12 days um, I watched Shtaim, Khan. I watched all the Israeli news channels for maybe 100 hours during the war. I, I saw no footage from Gaza. All the footage I saw was only from Ashkelon and Ashdod, and I, I didn't see any Palestinians being interviewed. So 
in, in terms of the story that's given to me, I'm only ever told that I'm a victim of Palestinian violence and, and Palestinian terrorism. And I'm sure in the Arab media, it's, it's, it's the reverse. There's, you know, there's, there's a lot of footage of, of, of Gaza and the horrific things that happen there and very little footage that, that comes from within Israel and the rockets landing in Ashkelon and Ramat Gan and, and places like that. So, so a lot of us don't necessarily understand that, but also it's not an equal conflict. Israel is by far the much more powerful side here. Um, and I think in order to move forward, you need trust. And at the moment, there's like zero trust between the two people. And that's why we're in the situation where we're in, where it's so, so hard to talk to each other. Um, and I've got a few theories of how to change that, which I'll talk about at the end. But I think that's, that's a big issue is trust because for so, so many years, um, Israel feels like it sort of made offers to Palestinians that were, that were rejected and therefore it shouldn't make those offers again. Um, and I, I find that stupid. It's like saying a person wants to have a relationship and the first relationship you had didn't work. So you're never going to try to have a relationship again. You know, we, we have to share this land. They're, they're in between the river and the sea. Now at the moment, there's some six and a half million Jews, about six, six million Arab Palestinians. It's about the same. It's 51%, 49%. You know, neither of us are leaving this place anytime soon. We have to share this land. And, and in order to do that, we need to talk to each other and we need to build trust. And that is what I see is missing. Thank you. Um, Heba, I'm not gonna ask that question to you because I think you've probably answered that already very clearly um, in what you've said. Um, but um, I may ask you just to clarify uh, a couple of things. First of all, somebody has suggested that um, uh, that you, you have said that um, Israeli Jews and Jews around the world hate Palestine. I didn't. I didn't hear you say that. Can you just clarify um, your your own sense of of um, of uh, how how you see the Jewish communities around the world and and is Israeli Jews as a whole? <laughs> okay, <laughs> I am used to. Uh, yani people be, uh, yani put uh, put words in my mouth that I didn't say. Um, I, I started by saying that I am a spoken Arabic teacher. I'm not a spoken Arabic teacher, of course, for Palestinian because Palestinian learn spoken Arabic at, at house. <laughs> I, I teach Israelis uh, spoken Arabic. And teacher. I, I will say also that Jiba was my Arabic teacher as well, <laughs> which is an excellent teacher. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, you know, I have friends that are Israelis and Jews. I have, um, I have, I went to the Hebrew University. Uh, I don't have a problem with Israelis. I don't have a problem with Jews. I don't have problems with Christians. I don't have a problem with the, like, Buddhism. I don't have problem with anyone that doesn't hurt me, that, that doesn't do me something. I have problem with people who hurt me. You know, who, who try to, to, do, to do things that, uh, that, that, that are against me. That's my problem. I don't have a problem with your religion. I don't have the, a problem with your ideas. If these ideas are not discriminate, discriminating me, or uh, if, if these ideas and laws they are, are not racist to me, you know, uh, it's... It's so funny, you know, uh, that it, when we talk about one state solution or two state solution or the, you know, the violence against Israelis and the rockets that la that are landing on Ashkelon and the, on uh, the road and like on near Gaza on the Israeli uh, neighborhoods, uh, like, you know, I I I I I believe that, you know. Um, Pain is, is is pain. It doesn't matter how much how much people die in each side. You know, uh, one 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 human being died. This is violence, and uh, I believe that there is no there is no there is no place to compare the violence of Israel with the violence of Hamas. You know, there is no place to compare that. Uh, place is a state. Uh, Israel is a state. Um, you know, it has all the means to um, to do anything it wants, 
and has uh, Gaza is a, a very small, uh, you know, place. Uh, okay, they are shooting uh, rockets, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know who started all that? You know who who blocked uh, Bab al Amud? Who who deported uh, Sheikh Jarrah and and uh, Silwan? I'm not uh, giving an excuse to violence, but like. We are, we are, you know, artists and uh, and many many uh, newspaper are uh, posting the, the 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 images of children and children died in the war, you know, what what good would that do to to these children who have already died? There's no good of doing that, you know. They are doing that to feel good with themselves that uh, we don't support violence. At the end of the day, these, you know, a lot of Israelis still sends their, their, their kids to the army. At the end of the day, um, a lot of people still support Israel, you know, because uh, they are against occupation, but they, they support it. Uh, again, I'm, I'm not against anyone because of his religion. Uh, you know, I have the right to live as well. Uh, if we are uh, thinking of one state solution, what about the Palestinian deported in 48? I want them all back. I can't, I can't talk uh, like uh, on behalf of them, on behalf of all these people died and deported and say, ah, I want peace now. Let's forget what happened and, you know, live together. Uh, every Israeli has the right to return, but Palestinian who were deported, no, there's no place for them to, to come back. There is injustice. <laughs> that's, uh, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, uh, one other thing I will clear up while, while, while we have you on the screen, Heba. Um, you talked about being deported from your home. I think it might be a, um, uh, an, uh, an, a, an issue in the way we understand the English translation. But I wonder if you meant a sort of thrown out of your home, ejected from your home. Was was that what you meant, or you, rather than taken to another country? Sorry. Sorry. When you said you were under threat of deportation, of being deported from East Jerusalem, did you mean you didn't mean thrown out of the country? Did you? Did you mean just depossessed of your your home and where you live? They can kick me out of my house. Yes. Okay. okay. They can. Uh, they can uh, forbid me to build. You know, if I don't build, I can't live in Jerusalem. So I would go to the West Bank to live, and then when I go to the West Bank, they can take my identity card. They can take all the rights that I have in Jerusalem, so I can't come back to Jerusalem. Uh, and also, I can be deported also out of the country if I if I was a, a you know a, 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 if uh, I was arrested in demonstration a few times if I write um, you know. Some somebody uh, like uh, wrote on chat. Uh, let's talk with uh, with a Palestinian uh, leadership. What Palestinian leadership? You know, every Palestinian lead, leader uh, that that is trying to do something in Jerusalem is being arrested and deported because they don't want the Palestinian leadership. They want the Palestinians like to wander alone, not as a leadership, not as a unit. We don't have a leadership. Every organization that is, that is trying to open, to do, you know, activities for young, for young people, sport, music, you know, folk dance, Palestinian dance, is forbidden and it's closed. You know, Palestinian in East Jerusalem must go to the municipality, to the Israeli municipality community center. Just in these centers, they can do such things. But, uh, you know, uh, separately operated or independent, independently operated Palestinian organization in East Jerusalem are forbidden for sure. Every leadership, you know, in anything, not, not political leadership, uh, leader, uh, not only political leader, every leader in East Jerusalem is, is threatened to be arrested and deported. And there are a lot of examples of these things. So no, you know, there is no negotiation. There is no uh, we can, uh, There is no peace. There is no dialogue. If there is, uh, if, if 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 this policy continues. Thank you. That's that's clear. Um, so another question we've had, and I'm sort of starting to to wind these up a little bit, is um, uh, how can the outside community help? Um, 
you mentioned about bringing leaders together to talk, but um, how can the international community um, work for peace? In, how can we prevent this uh, cycle of violence? What can we, what can we do to, to stop it, if, if anything? How would you see the, univer the international uh, elements in this? And specifically, maybe the UK? Is, is this for me or for yeah you you can start and then it, it i can finish up while you're on the yeah, screen you can go. yeah i think um i'm a little bit uh, um you know um skeptical <laughs> yeah and also maybe pessimistic today i don't know why <laughs> uh, but i i i i believe in education I believe in education so much. But again, I, you have to know that uh, in East Jerusalem, uh, Jerusalem kids, uh, uh, Palestinian is in East Jerusalem. They can't, they can't learn their own history. You know, for me, I, I didn't learn nothing about the Nakba, about 48, what happened to my own people. I learned nothing because it is censored by the Israeli government. I can't learn about my own people, the massacres that happened on, in the Palestinian, uh, about Palestinian refugees around the world. I, I didn't learn anything about that. I don't know my history. I don't have the right to learn my history. So um, um, this is, uh, I believe in education. Um, if, if everyone, uh, also abroad, also in the UK, also in America, also not Jew and not Palestinian and not connected with the conflict. If everyone uh, teach their children to to, uh, yani, to uh, teach them how to to listen, how to search for stories, how to open their eyes, how not to be uh, to be you know uh, just uh, with one point of view when they hear it. Uh, to be skeptical, to, to be skeptical, to to have doubts, to ask mm -hmm. questions, to search um, mm -hmm. in any in any topic in the life, not only the Palestinian-Israeli uh, con conflict. If everyone teach his his own children, ask questions also about religion, also about you know topics that we are not allowed to, to talk about, uh, topics that we are not allowed to ask about. Um, you know, we can, we can, people can see the truth uh, more easily. Um, so I believe in education, yeah. I believe yeah. also in media. Um, um, as, to, as, yes. Yeah, just to add to what Hiba said, I think one of the most important things you can do for peace is something that Hiba does every day, which is learning Arabic. I think if more Israelis spoke Arabic, um, that would have a huge impact. And I know there's another group called Lisan, which teaches um, Palestinian women Hebrew for, for the same reason. I think the fact, you know, when I went to Northern Ireland, one of the things that I noticed is already in the 70s during the travels, the Catholics and Protestants could talk to one another because they had they both spoke English. By the way, with an accent, I didn't understand, but that's a whole other issue. But <laughs> at least they both spoke, spoke English. And I think... Um, I think here it's so difficult for us to talk to each other because of the language barrier. Um, and so I think that's I think that's one very important thing. And I also just prepared just three slides um, also just to answer this question um, about what you can do. So the first thing is, and, and it's the same point, I didn't know Hiba was gonna say it, but very much I think when you get your news, um, so many people today get their news from like Instagram or from their friend's Facebook feed or something and they don't get their news from actual news sites. Um, and I think it's a big problem because you end up if you read news that's not from journalists that you know source things and have photos and quotes and cameras and all of those sorts of things, then you then you miss the story. So I think before you decide what you think about something, have a look at the websites listed here. You know, all of these websites um, are in English, I think, except two of them. But you can put them in a Google Translate and and get them. Um, I've listed the bias for, for the Israeli ones, which I know much better of whether they're left or right wing. But look at the same story. If you want to know what's going to happen with Naftali Bennett, if he's prime minister, you know, look at some of the Israeli news sites. If you want to know what what are people saying about, about Fatah and Hamas, you've got a list of Arab and Palestinian uh, news sites there, both in English 
um, and in Arabic. A lot of these websites, I don't trust their opinion section so much, but their reporting is generally um, quite good in terms of giving a diversity of opinion. So that's one thing you can do is just inform yourself with the news that people here are consuming by going to these websites. The next thing you can do is read. Um, I often recommend these two books when, when people ask what sort of books should I be reading. Um, Letters to My Palestinian Neighbour is a book written by an Israeli Jew called Yossi Klein Halevi to, to a Palestinian. And uh, Where the Line in Drawn is written by Raja Shahada is a Palestinian author from Ramallah, also written a book to a Canadian Jew. So both of them are letters to the other explaining the narratives of why this place is important to us because um, you need to understand the history and, and as he even mentioned the religious connections and all of those things so I think these two books are, are, are good books to read. Um, another Facebook page that I, I really recommend that's excellent is called O202. Um, what they do is they translate every day the most viral post from Hebrew to Arabic and the most viral post from Arabic to Hebrew. So it gives people on the other side of the city a sense of what's going on. And then you can go to their website and read both posts in English or, again, just put it through Google Translate. But it's a good way to get a sense of what people on the ground are talking about. And then finally, if you're into podcasts, this is a podcast about um, Kids for Peace. It's on a podcast called The Branch. Um, and it's a podcast that features dialogues between Israelis and Palestinians in all sorts of different fields and give stories of hope of, of people trying to work together to, to, sh to have the difficult conversations that, that Hiba and I are having today and to, and to try and understand where everyone is coming from. So you can listen to, to two of, of the youth there from, from Kids for Peace or listen to the other episodes of The Branch that, that all have, I think, I think stories that you won't necessarily hear in mainstream media, but it's important for you to know. Um, that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Um, thank you to both of you. Um, I think um, there's been a lots of very interesting uh, comments made in the in the chat um, about uh, uh, how we need to hear. We need to disagree sometimes, but we need to hear the lived experiences because we we can't um, understand here what's going on unless we hear from from you folk what it's like to actually be there um, and, and what we need to hear and know, even if it's difficult. Um, and, and I think um, and I'd like to thank everybody who's participated. And there's been lots of stuff in the chat and lots of, of interaction. Um, but we've we're grateful to you. I mean, we, we can't imagine what it's like and how painful it is to be living where you're living and experiencing everything that you're going through. Um, and yet you're willing to share um, your time with us. Um, and, and it is only by listening and only by all of us looking in the right direction that will um, anything can be achieved. So thank you um, very much indeed uh, for for this session. Um, we really, really are grateful. Um, I'm going to hand back now to um, Sadia just to see uh, if there's anything else um, we, we need to say. But I know that um, she's going to email out um, some of the links if you um, uh, make sure that we have those, those links. Um, and I'm sure you've seen in the chat um, that uh, everybody is, is, uh, is, is, uh, um, has lots of comments and is very grateful uh, and has uh, things to say. So thank you very much indeed. Um, yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Jane. Thank you very, very much, Ite and Hiba. Seriously, it's been um, uh, an, uh, a really um, Im important discussion uh, for many. And like uh, Jane said, you know, it is your lived experiences that we really need to hear. So thank you so much for being part of BODIP and being part of being able to, to share those um, experiences with our um friends and supporters in the UK. Um, thank you everybody else for, for being here on a Sunday afternoon. I really appreciate it. Um, we will try and put some of this recording on YouTube if we're able to. I know we had a bit of a technical glitch, so apologies for that. I will also ask Ite for the links that he's put up on chat and I will send that through on email and possibly even have them on our website. We will be in touch. We, we are hoping to have a couple more web, uh, webinars in the next uh, few weeks or so. Um, we are also um, planning a study tour for the region, um, possibly mid 
um, early mid next year. If you're interested, please um, let us know, reach out to us. If there's anything else that you'd like to say uh, privately to Jane, I or Warren or even Ite and Hiba, please let us know, we'll help you connect. Um, and thank you very much for all your support. Warren, is there anything else that you would want to add? Warren is also here. He's a co-chair and treasurer for FODIP. Surprisingly, no, 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 not a lot, but it's uh, obviously I've got to say something. Um, what else would a rabbi do? Um, a massive thank you, Hiba and Itai, um, to both of you. Um, well, steered through the afternoon and the questions, Jane, as well. Thank you. Um, and I think FODIP is very much about encouraging all of us to hear the different views, different opinions, different facts on the grounds, different perceptions on facts. We don't take a particular position. We, I would, we would love to see peace. The sooner the better. We would love to see justice and fairness and equality. And the hope of all of our faiths, in particular within FODIP, Judaism, Christianity and Islam, is very much one for peace, for understanding each other, for moving forward, um, and not always looking back at the recriminations and things, but obviously there are stories and there's pain and there's injustice that has to be heard. And I do very much believe that's what we're about. So please continue to um, go with us on this journey to help the relationships between our communities here that need a lot of um, work as well, especially at this time. And if you want to support the work of FODIP, as treasurer, I feel I have to say that, Thank you to those of you that have a massive thank you, um, but we're always in need of um, extra support. So please get in touch or via the website. But it's I, Hiba, massive thank you again. I've heard you twice in the last month. It's worth every minute of it. Thank you. Uh, uh, mm. Take care, everyone.